proud of the way our kids fought. Uh, largest comeback in school history. Uh, just proud. I, I don't know what else to say. Our kids showed a lot of heart. And uh, I, I just, it just, we've had so much adversity and so many ups and downs of this off season and even during this season. And to do what our young men did today, uh, it's been 30 years since we beat UCF. Last 13 games, uh, it's nice to be on the right side of that win column. Again, it was a full team effort, right? Our defense got that final stop, forced to miss kick, all those things. Obviously proud of the offense performance, especially in the second half. Um, I owe credit to, let me say, this game was honoring Isaac Bruce. So Isaac's one of the true legends. I wish he was here with us to celebrate, but if, if you guys can share this with him, thank you, Isaac. This game also honored Tom Three. Um, Scott Foreman, a dear friend of mine. So please let him know this game was also an honor of them. And just, just so proud of our young men. As I catch my breath, I'll take some questions, please. Jacob, first question. Well, Coach, uh, first off, congrats on your first conference win. Thank you. Secondly, what does it feel like to be a Memphis head coach and beat UCF after so many coaches could not? What does it feel like? You know, re really, it's the way it occurred. And it just, I, I was walking up and down the sideline. I had, had saw some heads down and I, I went, didn't like that. And I told our guys, we got to keep believing. It's the way we won. Um, look, I, 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 if I'd be lying if I said this game wasn't important, if it didn't mean something in the history of this program and what we've occurred, obviously, as you guys know, as a grad assistant there at UCF, but for our young men that know that I told them what occurred on that field tonight will carry over for the rest of their lives, not only because of the opponent we beat, um, and they're a hell of a team. Obviously, they gave us everything we could handle more. Um, but fighting through adversity, never giving up, that will carry a long way. And those lessons are just as important as coming away with beating UCF. But uh, I'm, I'm honored. Obviously, so many great coaches came before me here at this program. I just hope it's one of many. Uh, as you guys well know, I'll watch this game tonight, and I'll probably be uh, stay up all night and get ready for a great Temple team. Thank you, Coach. Steven? Ryan, Ryan, congrats on the win. Thank you, Steve. My dad, my dad just called me a second ago. He asked me, how'd you guys pull it off? So I got I guess I got it. I didn't really know. When you were guys down 21, did you imagine this was possible pulling this off? I, I truly did. I mean, if anybody noticed me on the sideline, I was going down uh, with a big smile on my face. And people probably think I'm quite psychotic, but because um, our guys fight. And like I said, part of the adversity we've been facing um, and just, you know, our, our guys know if we stick together, we got this thing. And so I was really proud of them. I mean, 100 percent of the credit goes to the players. Obviously, um, we got some things we got to clean up. Certainly not a perfect game. I mean, I, I'd rather the games not go down the last while. I'll, I'll have a heart attack before this thing's all said and done. But uh, our, our young men believe they believe in each other. They believe in the way we do things. Um, I mean, I'm sitting there in the fourth quarter telling guys to tuck their shirts in and telling those guys that to get off the bench that weren't playing and why? Why was I doing that in the fourth quarter? Because that stuff's important to me. I think that makes a difference in what we want to do as a program moving forward. Terry? Hey, Coach. Uh, you, uh, you had two guys that couldn't even get off the bench last year, Austin Hall and Todd Washington, because of you. And they show up, act like this was just another game, and show up and, and do what they need to do and get almost 300 yards between them. What it says about their character going in? Yeah, I mean, I, look, we had a lot of guys step up that uh, hadn't been on our roster. And we knew going this year, right? We were, um, you know, obviously with, you know, we met Kenny Gay will not be in, we knew guys would have to step up, obviously. Uh, and I go and approach this, DeMonte Cox, he wasn't there. So we had other guys step up and just proud of the efforts. I think the entire offense as a whole, obviously led by Brady White, um, put on a hell of a performance. And look, we're going to need a lot of those young receivers to step up and obviously proud of Calvin and Taj and the entire wide receiving core. Brian, congrats on the win, coach. Thank you. Uh, both teams combined for 17 uh, penalties. And usually when these two teams plays, there, there's a high amount of penalties. Uh, you know, what's the cause of that? Is it just because it's a physical game? I like to think so. I think, you know, um, you know, our guys, hey, we, uh, you know, we use the term greenhouse effect, right? We never want to get too high or never get too low during the course of a game. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of that was just uh, different things, right? So amped up the physicality of the game. We knew what was going on and 
some of those penalties started occurring later on in the game uh, due to the fact that, hey, we had a chance to come back. And you know, that's stuff we got to continue to clean up. Steven. Coach, uh, another one of those young receivers was Javon Ivory. I remember you talking about him in the in the kind of the preseason. When you consider the stage, prime time, best receiver isn't going to be available. How proud are you of the way that he performed under so much pressure? Well, oh, very proud of Javon. I mean, he he went out there and stepped up, like you guys said. We had a lot of faces out there that are are, are making plays, right? You think about the guys. You know, Sean Dykes didn't play much last year, right? And obviously, has come back and doing great things this year. Calvin Austin. You guys remember he was a walk on last year and uh, you know this is his first year as a scholarship wide receiver force Taj Washington really didn't play last year Javon Ivory really didn't play last year Dre Clark played sparingly last year uh, but if you guys remember right we had guys like Antonio Gibson Kenny Gangwell Patrick Taylor um, so we got a lot of new faces on offense but again um, the offensive line did a solid job and I was just you know obviously the quarterback did a great job but proud of those were wide receivers for stepping up big time Evan Ryan, last week you guys nearly had the 21 point comeback. This game, you guys were resilient as you stayed in it. What is it about this team where even though that those deficits are there, there's a trust and there's a confidence in this group that, you know, like Brady said last week, we have them where we want them when they were down. What is it about this group that kind of has this ability to, to be resilient? You know, Evan, I, I truly, and this is not coach speak, I, I believe it talks about the character of our young men, the fight that we have, the guys that aren't giving up. No, I, I don't want to go down 21 points all these games. I don't know if, if that's where we want to be, um, but just so proud. I, I just think it speaks so highly uh, of the heart and the character and the belief of these guys. We believe in each other. We're a family. And we know, like we've talked about, these last six months have been screwed up. And we, you know, Brady just broke down the team after I got done talking to them. When he broke the rock, he said, look, man, it's been screwed up here. A lot of things have occurred this season, but guess what? We keep fighting. We got our brotherhood. And we're just, everybody's so proud. It doesn't matter if you were on the, the bench, not dressed out and shoulder pads, waving a towel, or you threw six touchdown passes. We're all in this together. And I think those guys know, and they're a resilient group. You know, pregame, Evan, while I was talking to them about what we needed, I said, we need to start fast and finish strong. Man, did they finish strong. But the biggest thing I told them, I said, they need to be relentless in everything they do. And, I, and, and I'm going to always speak because I believe these you know, our life lessons to them. I talk about being relentless. Everything they do on the field will carry over to what they do off the field, right? And study hall, uh, community service, uh, their relationships with their family. I think that stuff's so important. On that last drive, did you say anything to Brady and the offense or did you just kind of let them just say, hey, you know what to do? Kevin Johns did a great job calling it. I just looked in the huddle. I had a big smile on my face. I said, we got this boys. Let's go make history. And uh, just so proud of them. Terry. Hey, coach, you say you're an old school coach, man, but I don't know too many old school coaches that go forward on four from one on their 27 yard line, go forward on two point conversions on multiple occasions when they didn't seem like no one to go for. What did that says about the confidence you have in your team, no matter what the situation is to come through? I, I believe in these young men. I truly do. I mean, I get to see them battle and, and the ups and downs that they've gone through. And, and I think when they know they coach got the confidence to go for it, they're like, all right, we got this thing. And that's why you said, you know, down 21 points. How can they look at me with a damn smile on my face on the sideline and in the huddle? And they like I said, they're like, yeah, we got you. We got this. And uh, again, I think it's the belief in each other, the belief in the way we do things, the belief in the way we work uh, and be able to fight through adversity. And guess what? This is just one small step. Uh, as you guys know, this is something we're going to have to carry on week in and week out because um, we're just getting started on our season. Jeff? Hey, uh, Ryan, thanks for I mean, uh, congratulations. Two questions. One is, did you have time to think anything before that field goal? What were you thinking uh, as they were lining up to kick that last field goal? Yeah, I was just thinking, hey, let's miss this thing so I can celebrate with my guys on the sideline. I mean, I truly, <laughs> uh, you know, it's... You go through so many ups and downs, the emotions you guys, have, you got to feel for what these last six months have looked like for our team. And I'd be lying if I said it's been easy. I mean, it's it's hard for everybody. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying we've got, woe is me, and the chips are stacked against us, and it's been hard. I mean, everybody's going through some stuff. Uh, but more for, so for our guys on the sideline, they deserve it. Um, just so proud of them. And, and that win, 100% for our players. And it, guess what? It's for all our previous Memphis teams. 
uh, that weren't able to do what we were tonight. And again, like I said, it's you know honoring Isaac Cruz, so honoring Pound Three, and that's what it meant to me more. Than anything. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm glad to be the head coach that was able to do so. But shoot, hell, man, it, it's the team that got to do, it, and I'm just so proud of them. But Jeff, no, I wasn't thinking much. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'm unmuted. Sorry. Um, you said that Brady broke the rock. How important has he been in terms of keeping the team on beam? I know you the the, the team, but when when players are, I don't 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 want to talk about Coxie. When players are opting out, is it harder to keep people who are staying all in? And how important has Brady been to keeping people all in? Yeah, I mean, look, we exactly right, Jeff. We use that mantra all in. And more so now than ever, right? Like what we got, and we talked about it. So we, all we got is all we need. And but you know, Brady's a huge leader. We got guys like Calvin Austin that are leaders, guys that believe. And when I say something like, "Hey, let's pick up the trash," they they get it. And but Brady's been so instrumental. The, lack of false start the way we want to do it. Uh, you guys got me, okay? But he's just been so instrumental. He he understands when I talk to the team. He's just another voice, and we're continuing to find guys that are saying, okay, hey, Coach Serfield said that, so, you know, that's the way we got to do things. But he, he's been awesome, right? He lives up in the office. He works his tail off. Uh, he lives and dies Memphis football. He bleeds blue. And, you know, the players believe in him. I think that's uh, that, that last drive, those guys looked in the home, and he's got a big smile on his face too. And uh, he, he's been awesome keeping those guys all in and I'm just so proud of him. I mean, he – you know, he's been resilient as any as they come, right? He had a, he did not have his best game versus SMU, and, and then some news this week he could have had his held head held down. And but no, he believes in guys like Calvin Austin, those young other receivers that stepped up, the offensive line, the running backs, the tight ends. I mean, and and he fights. I mean, he's a fighter. Gosh darn, I'm so glad he's on our side. Steven? Uh, Coach, obviously, I know there's a there's going to be a lot to focus on with the defense. But when it mattered most, they kind of got you guys some crucial stops. How do you kind of feel about them after you guys got this win? Yeah, Stephen, I'm not gonna make any uh, miss about it. We've got we've got to improve on that side. We can't give up the explosive plays, and I knew that had to be key. I, look, credit the UCF; they're one of the best offenses in the country, and uh, there's a reason why they were put up so many yards and so many points. I mean, they they're very very good. They're very very talented. They're very very fast. They play fast. Uh, so we got things we need to clean up defensively, but guess what? They got the stop when it mattered most, and they they forced that missed kick when it mattered most. So um, just like yeah, guess what? We got things we got to clean up on special teams. We got things we got to clean up on offense. I mean, I shame on me. I I didn't have many answers when they started shutting down our run, and that that starts with me. And I've got to do a better job with that. And so look, all of this, any issues that we have as a team, 100% of the fingers should be pointed at me, and we'll find a way to fix it. I believe in our guys. Um, and our coaches and we'll get it done. But yeah, we've got a lot to clean up in all three phases. Evan. Brian got to ask, so what exactly is the status on DeMonte Coxie and TJ Carter, just for the record? Yep, for the record, DeMonte Coxie is uh, not part of our football program right now. Um, and, you know, we're, we're moving forward without him. And uh, like I said, uh, Tonight, we, you know, I believe in the guys we got, and the receivers, and I'm proud of the way they performed. And then TJ Carter um, was on the sideline, as you guys saw, and was not able to dress for this game. Devin? First of all, Coach, congrats on the win. Thank you. Uh, when, when everything cools down and all the dust settles, when you look back at this game, what is one word, one word to describe this game when you look back at it? I think the word was used earlier, right? I mean, I can say proud, I can say all that stuff, but resilient. And our, like I said, our kids showed heart, they showed character, they showed fight, um, relentless in their effort to come back. And, uh, and I, like to, I like to see that. Obviously, like I said, I don't want to be coming back from large deficits like that anymore. But uh, again, I know I, I'm probably overusing the word proud, but I don't know if I, I could be even more proud of the group that's in that locker room right now. Chris? Yeah, uh, Ryan, I might know the answer to this, um, but the decision to go for the two-point conversions to make it like six-point or maybe 13-point deficits, uh, what's behind that? Is that about trying to win in regulation? I know it's something John Harbaugh's talking about. Yeah, Chris, so look, normally um, 
you know, that it's some you can say, well, why would you go for uh, two point after that? What to put it when we were down to then if we got a touchdown and kick six point, then it would be win the game. And really, it was twofold. One, we were playing to win the football game. I didn't want to go up there and score twice and then go into overtime. Um, but also, I think our guys had confidence, right? We knew if we got that two point conversion. And I went up and down the sideline and I told our guys, I said, do you guys know why we went for two there? A lot of them said, no. I said, look, we're going to win this game when we kick that extra point. And it's amazing to see their eyes light up and say, damn straight, man. Coach believes in us. That, that's okay. That's what's up. And that, and, and that's part of it. You can call it foolish coaching or just, but, but in my opinion, look, we were playing to win the football game. And I literally, right after that two-point conversion, I walked up and down the sideline and told everybody exactly why we did. What, was there any – I know sometimes the math tells you it's better to do that. Did, did that enter the decision at all? Yeah, I'm not much of a statistician or even though I was an economics major. But, uh, you know, we, we do use analytics. And um, really at that point, they said, if you, you know, if you're playing to win the football game, you go for two there early. That way, if you didn't get it, then you go for two to tie it up. Um, so that's about a 50% chance. If we're playing to w win the game, then I'll, I'll take that risk right there. So that's why we did it, Chris. Um, you know, maybe if it was a 10 to 10 football game or if it was a lower scoring game, maybe it'd been more conservative. But I also knew that, hey, um, you know, at that point, our defense was giving up some big plays, and I just thought it was the best thing to be aggressive there. Terry, last question. Hey, Coach, uh, you know, you, you know, when you play a good time, you, you always say, we got to play a perfect game. You guys didn't play nowhere near a perfect game, and you still come back winning. What did that say about the character of the team, that you, you can do this even against a good team and still come out on top? Yeah, well, we did not play a perfect game. Like I said, we got a lot of things to correct, uh, a lot of things to fix and improve upon. And that's the nice thing is after this win, I'm actually going to be much harder on our team because now, now they can sit there and say, okay, yeah, Coach is on our ass right now because we got a lot to work to do. And if it was after a loss and I'm, I'm chewing tail and saying we got to fix that, maybe they wouldn't listen. But I think now's a perfect time to say, okay, guys, we got to clean this up. We got to clean that up. And the guys will buy and say, yeah, you're exactly right. And um, look, I want to enjoy this. I, I told them we got to make great decisions tonight, but we got to come back tomorrow ready to work. We know what we got risk with Temple coming back. I think a lot of our guys have a bad taste in their mouth. But to answer your question, Terry, uh, you know, it, it speaks so highly of the character of our guys to come back the way they did without playing a perfect game. And I know that they'll always fight. And I'm, again, I'll use that word proud one more time. I'm really proud of this Memphis football program. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. You all have a great night.